Well, good morning, YouTube. Loft is here. Been down the ocean and picked up a little beauty. What you, well, I say a little beauty. This is a big beauty. It is the 2025 model BMW R1300 GSA. It's in full TE spec with triple black paint. Isn't it a gorgeous little bike? Big bike. Anyway, if you're interested in this big Bertha, you stick around. Well, good morning, YouTube. Loft is here. Look at this little beauty. Chris has just run me through all the specs. And we've got a 2025 model. GSA. TE spec in triple black. How about that? So we're running in without the height control on. I'll show you that later. And we've got the seat in the eye position. I'll show you that later. Okay. So when it's switched off, you switch the power button. It, although it's not using the adaptive height, it does automatically drop to its lowest setting. So when you start it, there it goes, it goes up. So that is, there it is. So I'm standing, yep. Yeah. Hmm, not bad at all. Okay, we're going to go for a little bit of a ride. Road's fairly busy, but we're away. We're in rain mode. It's been raining all morning. Roads are a bit moist, and I've got it set in road. And as I say, the adaptive height switched off. So we're riding this today for us big lads. Five, six foot six, six foot seven. You're going to be the ones who want to buy one of these because there's not many alternatives on the road for you. So we're uh, nice and comfy. It is very, very comfy, very smooth. The pickup on the throttle in rain mode is extremely smooth. Very nice indeed. Steering's lovely. Of course, we've got telelevers and paralevers. Those of you that are au okay with the GS or the GSA although the looks are a bit different to be fair I'm sitting here now on this bike it just feels like I'm riding a GSA it's no different it's comfortable it's like an old pair of slippers that you've had for a long time it just looks a bit different yeah it's like it's like anything nobody likes change I've got to say I do prefer the new engine and I'm going to take it a bit of a thrash over one of these uh, less than nice uh, lanes round Moyla and then we'll have a walk round and I'll give you the full specs and I'll tell you all about it. To be fair, today I want to talk more about how the bike feels to me as a new purchaser if you like unfortunately it's not got the ASA it's not got the clutch I would have liked to have ridden the one with the clutch but I know a lot of you GS owners are anti that sort of thing but once you've done it a few times you get used to it I personally think the ASA is wonderful and I love it I will say one thing I've noticed about this 1300 engine in general whether it's in the uh, standard GS or whether it's in this model the GSA it's a bit tappity it's a bit noisy it reminds me of my old 1200 engine the 1250 was a a lot quieter a lot smoother but we'll see how we get on with it as I say I don't want to take too many risks because the roads are extremely moist it's that time of year now where we've got lots of leaf mould right here we go going to keep to the right slightly as you know I'm using the clutch a bit at first just to let the ah there we go snick it in super quick shifter auto blip 
yeah that's nice yeah it works fine as I say on these roads around the back of Myla there's not much point in having it in dynamic or dynamic pro or dynamic suspension because they're not the best of services just pull the visor down OK, we're going to take a right here and I'll give it a bit of stick. There we are, first gear, slight downhill, here we go. Yeah, the quick shift is super, works OK. As I said on the uh, when I rode the ASA, the GSASA, all these acronyms. The GSASA <laughs> automatic clutch. I found the gearbox to be superb. Now today we're on the GSA with the manual clutch, manual gearbox, everything. And it's nice, it's smooth, it works well. So if that's your bag, you get one. We've got a bit of traffic about. So I'm just down a hill now, I'm just gonna use the auto blip to see what it's like. That's just dropped it into second, slowing us down. That's lovely. Bit of revs. I don't expect the quick shifter to work wonderful in rain mode, but it does work well. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bike down to Myla and show it you. Okay. I'll see you in a minute. Good looking machine, looks far better, far better in the flesh than any of the photographs I've seen. What do you think? Looks superb, doesn't it? Absolutely superb. So here we have it then, YouTube. The big boy. As I say, I've switched the adaptive ride height off. I don't need it, I'm six foot five. So here we go, on you get. So I'm going to put the power on, start up, now it raises slightly. So this is in the full ride height. As you can see, six foot five, I can plant both feet nice and easy. So I'm sitting on this, the leg room is amazing. I'll just switch it off. So you can see the leg room. So here we go, there it is. I've got loads and another three and a half, four inches at the front. I can get both feet on, really comfortable. It does feel like a GSA. When I rode the standard GS, it felt a bit diminutive, a bit tiny, a bit small. This is a big boy. It's a proper bike. It feels big. There's low, I can slide forward, I can slide back. Comfy, mega, mega comfy. The handlebars are just perfect. To be fair, it feels just like a 1250. Whatever you think at the looks, you've got to ride it. Because to be fair, now I'm sitting here, I can't tell it's got aluminium side panels and all that nonsense. It's just a GSA. Let's have a close look and show you the um, all the instruments and the dash. So here we are. Pretty standard affair. So we've got the new, the new system. We've got the push button. Push, comes into life. There it is, I'm on the sports screen. I quite like the sports screen. So before we start it, whatever we do, I'm just gonna run across. So adjustable span levers, hand guards, indicators built in. We've got this push button to start. We've got the mode button, which goes from road, rain, dynamic, dynamic pro, whatever, enduro, whatever you want. Start, stop. SOS button, we don't need that, thank goodness. Coming across. Same again, we got the span adjustable clutch, because this is the, the manual version with the gearbox and clutch. Indicators built in. These little devices here are the blind spot warnings. These come up and tell you if there's something in your blind spot. So I'll just talk you through. Cruise control. Adaptive cruise, of course, hazard warning, the donut button. The donut button switches between the dash systems. Up and down, menu, 
Indicators. Now, I find it's quite a reach for the indicators, but they're okay. Horn. Quite a good horn. Quite loud, not bad. The whiz wheel. There we go. So we've got a little cubby hole. It's okay for a bit of change. It'll do for a, a ticket on the toll. But that's about all you'll get. So there's the dash. Let's spring it into life. Here's the sound from the cockpit. It's very hard to over rev. Let's have a listen from the exhaust. So as I say, we're in the sport dash. You push the donut. Now you've got your rocker switch, your multi-rocker switch. You come down, depending what you want to actually activate. So the one with the dot by it is where it's set. So it's on damping at the moment. So if we go down a ride height, we push the whiz wheel to the right, it changes the ride height. As you can see, dampening, push it to the right, road, press it one way, press it the other way, dynamic, ever so simple, very intuitive. DCT, it's traction control, it's on, there are various settings. Windscreen, which is what the, if you look, it's got the push and hold, so that's where the donut has been set for the push and hold to operate the windscreen. If you just um, operate the up and down, it will do the, at the moment, the heating system, which is grips and seats. If you push and hold, it goes to screen and you go up and down with the screen. I've showed you that on a previous one. So there we go, heating. So you've got a choice between uh, grips on and off or seats on and off. It's all pretty intuitive to be fair, it's not a problem. So you pull it back to the left and out you come. As you can see, traction control warning and this is uh, for your adaptive traction. You can set it one, two or three bars depending on how close or how far away you want it to act before it slows you down. It's all very intuitive, it's very, very easy. It's a simple bike to use and operate. Shall we do the specs? Right, let's get the specs. What exactly have we got? We've got the 2025 model, BMW R1300 GSA. It comes in three colours, triple back, a catacorum green, or the trophy. This is the triple black. This is the same 1300cc air, water-cooled, four-stroke, overhead valve, eight-valve shift cam boxer twin that's fitted to all of the R1300s that have been released. So it's the GS and the GSA, of course. The others are going to follow the RT, the R and the RS. They will be coming. 145 brake horsepower at 7,750 revs. 110 foot-pound at 7,750 revs. This is the manual. It's a six-speed shaft drive with a card and shaft on the back. I've deliberately specced this so as it's got the normal bike. In standard trim, it's 870 to 890. When you activate the suspension lowering, the automatic suspension, it drops it by 30 mil. Now, this is a bit of a subject. Now, there's lots of seats and lots of options. You can buy this bike in TE spec with a 790 seat. So the low seat, comfort low, adaptive ride control it will lower to 790. Also you can buy the comfort high seat you can knock it up to a lofty 915 mil that is huge gigantic probably as tall as you can get but at the moment we're running it at 890 and I find it very very comfortable. Right 30 litres of fuel big tank one thing that I do notice, which is a bit strange, is this, this weld. It doesn't look so bad on this um, grey, but it, on the red it don't look so clever. But it's a nice weld and it's well done. So it holds 30 litres of fuel. It is 269 kilograms wet, no luggage, no any, anything. So that's the basic bike. I believe it's within a pound or two of the old bike. So we're only splitting airs. It's a big bike. It's a heavy bike. And by the time you've got it loaded up with three boxes and a pillion, it's going to be a lot heavier. So, you know the score. Let's have a look at the front end and the back end. On the front, we've got an Evo Telelever with twin 310mm discs and a BMW badged four-piston caliper. I believe they are Brembo, but they're badged BMW. We're running a 120 70 19. 
on the rear end we've got an Evo Paralever. There's the cardan and the Paralever. We've got a single 285mm disc with a two piston BMW badged caliper. On the rear the wheel is a 170 60 17, also running Metzella 2 runs next. Nice tyres, they're the next twos I believe. Engine bars are standard. Now as you can see, this little affair here and this little affair here for the luggage. I'm going to clip to the other video now and show you the luggage. Okay, so we've got the rally. It's all the way down. These are the boxes. Look at these little boxes. We've got a black box. There's a choice of or a silver box. Hey, what do you think? Quite chunky. Dave's took the key so I can't take it off, but I can open it for you. Nice and easy. You pull the little lip, flick, open it comes. And it does come off as it happens. How about that? It's fairly co capacious, I'd say 35 litres. Yeah, not bad, 35 litres. I'll put it down and show you it again. So, lines up and locks. You pull the little tab, lift, and away you go. Not bad. Now, the right hand pan here, no electrics. This little device here is the electric connection for the top box and the little connection on the side here, same as the standard GS. This is the connector for the USB port inside. So the electrical connection is on the side, USB port here on the back. Looks like a standard USB... USB-C. Huge tank. It's a bit like the Motec ones, you pull and lift. Dead simple, just got a little locking mechanism. There it is, pull and lift for the fuel tank. Pretty big, not bad at all. Probably a good 20 litres in there, quite surprised. Good zip. I'm not sure at the, at the waterproof ability of it. Little side one. We've got the cases, these simple job. So you don't actually pull the tab. There's a little one underneath, you just pull it, off it comes. How about that? And a little bag, four litre bag. So you drop the top in, push the sides on. Yeah, it's quite good, it's a lot like the Motec kit. Hell of a lot like the Motec kit. So when you stand back and look at it, and wide that. That's a big wide bike, isn't it? So we've got the red, the Lego brick, which looks much better in the flesh. The triple black with all the boxes on. The green, which looks lovely. And I've got to say, I really do like the look of the trophy. Good colours in it, the trophy. It's got the same fittings here. These are for the bags, dead simple, nice and easy. Okay, so what have we got? We've got ET grips, cruise control, TPMS, keyless, electronic DSA, you name it, auto height, auto shift, ride assist, top cases, comfort, uh, you, the list just goes on and on and on and on. But this bike, in its current form, as a TE spec, with the automatic up and down business, is about 21, 22,000 pounds. By the, as soon as you start stepping it up, adding all the nonsense, by the time you've added panniers, top cases and everything, a TE with all the bits on is going to cost you £27,300. I'll say it again, I'll say it slowly. £27,300. You start putting 719 kit on and you're up to thirty grand before you even know it. But the base, base model with nothing on, the one nobody ever buys, is £18,870. It's a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of bike. It's a lovely bike. I've got to say, I would have preferred it with the ASA, the automatic clutch, because I think that's a game changer. These bikes are different class with the clutch, but this one ain't got it, so let's take another ride. I'll see you in a minute. Okay then, YouTube, you've had a look round. What do you think? Just give you another quick look at Miley Yacht Harbour. It's a shame the sun's not shining today. This is an absolute beautiful place. If ever you're down here in Cornwall, you come down to Miley Yacht Harbour, to the, the Yacht Club here, there's a lovely calf. 
There's some cracking food. It is a beautiful place. Anyway, we're talking GSAs. We're talking Big Bertha. I know people have had a bit of a say about the looks and everything, but forget it. If you want to buy a new GSA, just go and buy one. Come and get one of these. I ain't going to ride it round all day. I'm just going to go up the hill, give it a bit of a thrash up the hill, test the brakes, see what they like. And then I'm going to take it back to Penryn and say uh, to the boys at Ocean, thank you very much for let, letting me take it out. It's a wonderful bike. When you spec it, you can spec it with the, cl the clutch the system, or you can spec it with the up and down. Now they're both similar prices. The adaptive height is about five or six hundred quid. The automatic clutch is about five or six hundred quid. So if you're unlucky and you're small and you want both, it's going to cost you twelve hundred quid. But me as a big person, six foot five, sixteen and a half stone. I wouldn't bother with the height control, I wouldn't waste the 600 quid, but I would definitely spec the clutch, the ASA. Personally, my opinion, I love the ASA. I was really pleased to, to see Chris Eves from 44 Teeth, who is a GS owner, take out the GSA with ASA and gush about it. Because I agree, I think, I think it's a game changer. Do we need clutches? I don't think we do. These bikes go so well without a clutch. Okay, so here we go. We're coming around the bend. We're going to do a slight downhill. I'll just do a bit of a brake test for you. Here we go, back brake. Now, considering it's wet, it did aggravate the ABS a little bit, but not too much. So away we go. Back up to 40 again. Front brake. Yeah, a little bit of a pulse, not too bad. Not bad, they're a bit green, they're a bit new, a bit fresh. So, what are we doing? 35 mile an hour, down a hill, quite steep, front and back. Yeah, it's good. It's, it don't hold it up to a braking stop like the TE uh, XR does. Now, the brakes on that are amazing. This is a big, heavy bike and it feels big and heavy. It's a big bike, to be fair. I know I keep saying it. It's got a fantastic cruise control. So I'll just knock the cruise on now, and I'll drop it back to 20 mile an hour. I know we're in the 30, but it don't matter. We're going to drop into a 20 any second. So there we are. We're in third gear doing 22 mile an hour. It ain't grumping, it ain't moaning. I'll just drop it back a bit more. 22, 21. How good's that? Slow riding. Absolute cinch slow riding. This bike is well balanced. Take it off road, do what you want. So here we go. Up the hill. I'll just wait till I clear the houses. I've put it in road mode. So the throttle's a little bit more responsive. So we're nearly there, we're still doing 30. I'm gonna pop it open on the steep hill. Here we go. We actually got the front wheel to come up a little bit then, did you see it? I'm glad I got the traction control on. I think the anti-wheelie needs adjusting slightly. you pays your money it takes your choice if you've already got a GSA 1250 with probably five or six or ten thousand miles on the clock I wouldn't bother changing to be fair if you're coming to the end of your PCP or you've got 35 45 50 thousand on your GSA I'd buy one of these come and buy one you will not regret it it's an absolutely beautiful bike 
As you know, I've got a Honda NT1100 DCT, which I love. I'm a big fan of the autos. And uh, I could probably buy a brand new model coming out, the 25 model for 14,000 pound. And this is gonna be twice as much, 27, 28. Is it twice the bike? I think it probably might be. A bit of a statement to make, isn't it? Everything it does, everything it does, it does perfect. If you're like me, a big lad, this bike fits like a glove. I know there's going to be some smaller ones out there who are going to want to buy a GSA, but as we've already said, you can actually get it down to 790. How good's that? The difference between 790 and 915 is just amazing. Anyway, I'm coming down the bottom, I'm nearly at Penry, and there's no point taking it out no longer. I had a bit of a ride round on it first before I uh, did the review, just to familiarise me with it, to see how different it is. And I would say it is a very different bike to the GS. Where the GS felt like a dinky toy, this feels like a Tonka toy. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Good bike. Very pleased. Well done, BMW. Far, far better than I expected. So here we are. Ocean BMW Penryn. If you're down here, come and say hello to the lads. They'll sort you out a test ride. Anyway, this is the lofty biker saying ta for now. Ta-da. Well, that's a nice bike.